Rich Spazano here from Digitally Feelers, and I discovered something which is sheer genius. Whenever I used to hear the word sheer, what I would do is like take this lettering from Affinity. I would always believe sheer meant if you get really close, you can go like that and that. And that was the only way I understood sheer. But I'm going to undo that. I'm going to show you some very cool things you can do with Affinity Photo Sheer. And it's nothing like what I just did. So let's get started. Here we have Affinity. And if I ever want, let me just duplicate that just so I have the original. Because everything I'm going to be doing right now is destructive. And once you do it, you can't change the text. So be aware of that. So when I want to get fancy with shapes and all, I normally went to uh, my mesh warp tool and then I started playing around and sometimes I can get it right. But then when I did that, I had to keep playing with the handles and that works fine and that's okay for most people. So I am going to hit apply. I'm going to actually delete that and now I'm going to duplicate and show you Affinity Photos filter, which is sheer, which I thought was really cool. I'm going to filter, distort, and shear. And this box opens up and it represents exactly what I'm going to be doing here to Affinity. For example, if I move that up, it moves up. If I curve it, it curves. I can add more points. For example, I can add another point here and curve it that way. So you can really almost do unlimited things. There is no text to path in Affinity Photo. There is an Affinity Designer. So if you have that, you can always do the uh, photo persona and designer persona with Studio Link. But you can do a text to path kind of in this way. And I thought that was pretty cool. You can also go the other way around. You can shear it each way like that. You can again add another point. You can make this look as weird as you want. So this is kind of interesting and fun, and it's great with text. So it also works with photos. So for example, here's, an, here's a photo of a fish. I will duplicate that just so I have the original. Not that I'll need it later, but you never know. So once again, I can go to, in fact, what I'll do is I'm going to put up, since this is a black background, I am going to say layer, new fill layer, and I'm going to make it black. And then I'm going to put it behind the fish. So now I'm on this fish. If I say filter, distort, and shear, that box opens up again. So you can make this fish do some animation if you'd like. You can kind of, he can kind of swim up. He can kind of look down. Actually, if you want him to look down, he can go like that and, and check on something. <laughs> I'm just playing and I'm having some fun. I don't know what I'd use it for, but I think you can. You can actually come up with some really cool stuff here. You want him to swim? There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, you can move him forward. You can move him back this way. Uh, you can add another point and make him really do some crazy, cra crazy things. On this side, you can go this way, you can go that way, um, maybe in the middle. I Again, there's so many interesting effects, and I haven't decided what I want to use it for, but I really did find this interesting. Oh, and you can get rid of points. Just hold a point and hit delete. So if I hold that point and hit delete, hold this point, hit delete, and then he goes back to straightening himself out, and straightening out back to normal is right there. So I can go like this and that's it. I'm, I'm not going to drag this tutorial on, but you can do some very cool stuff. You can, you can do cutouts and just make them do different things. Maybe you need an arrow pointing. I don't know. Let's say, let's say we do an arrow here and let's give that arrow a color. Uh, let's give it a yellow color. It's pretty ugly. But maybe we want this arrow to, to show the fish. So here, I'll just do this. I don't know if it'll work. I'm just testing right now. But maybe we want this arrow to show parts of this fish. So I'm going to just put that like that. And then I'll go filter, distort, and shear. And I can do that like that. And I can bring him up that way. 
and I don't know what else. Let's see. Uh, let's try, and maybe I want him to go a little bit up on a shape like that. And I can kind of follow the shape of the fish if I want. So, and I know arrow is ridiculous and that's not the point. The point is you can do these kind of things and you can play with them. And I think you have a lot of control here. And if I wanted this side, I don't know, you can you can make this arrow move like that. Or if you want it to move in the middle, I don't know what exactly what it does. Let's see. We can do that. And then maybe if we did this, I don't know. I'm playing, like I said, whoops. So now let's see if we move this arrow this way. And then we say filter distort shear and then you can go this way so that helps with when you want to go the other way around and let's see we can go like that and maybe bring some of this down you could go up or down this way so this is pretty cool and it's a very quick tutorial and you can find i'm sure you can find uses for it but i really did like this because the whole time here i've been using this mesh warp tool and I didn't realize that shear uh, does what it does here in the distort. Remember once again that once you click shear, it's a pixel layer now. It is, it is destructive. You, can, you cannot get lettering back, for example. So be aware of that. If you need the original, make yourself a copy. And I hope you liked this tutorial. And if you did, please click like and subscribe. And have a good day. Bye.